Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of DLA Ignite. Uh, with me today, I've got Emily Tornquist. Yeah. <laughs> I've been practicing before we went on. It's Swedish, by the way. Um, Emily, you, you do social media for the British Heart Foundation. I do indeed. And, and we, um, we were on a panel the other week. Um, and you said some amazing things um, um, about what you're doing in a non-for-profit around social media, around mm -hmm. COVID-19 and what you're doing. And what we're going to do today is talk about that. Yeah. Fantastic. You're in the right place then. <laughs> um, so um, before we get started, we have there's people that are watching that will probably not be in the UK. Um, they probably understand, you know, with, with the, the term non for profits generally global. Um, though you would see yourself as a probably call yourself a charity. Um, and but what to explain to people what the British Heart Foundation does? Yeah, sure. Um, so essentially, we are a medical research charity. Um, so that means we fund research into all types of heart and circulatory diseases um, and their risk factors. So that's things like um, diabetes, vascular dementia and strokes. Um, so our remit actually does go much for, like beyond the heart, really. Um, and yes, we do fund, that's our kind of primary aim is funding that research, but we also offer um, help and support to people who are living with heart and circulatory diseases. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. And we're obviously also a massive retailer. Um, we've got charity shops all across the UK. On, you'll find us on most high streets um, selling everything from kind of secondhand sofas to unwanted clothes. And it's it's really, really broad. So we're we're raising money to kind of support all those different functions really all the time. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that people are quite often miss is that you're actually a big retailer. Yeah, massive. You've got, what, seven, what's, you've got 750 shops. Yeah, and they vary in size, they vary in items we sell, so yeah, we're massive. Um, yeah, and people don't automatically think of that when you think of a charity. So hmm. yeah, we're kind of a big player in that field as well. Hmm. So, so explain to everybody the the what the marketing um, landscape was kind of before the crisis. Mm, I mean, our business as usual was pretty full on. I have to say, like in terms of digital marketing, we'd have campaigns running across kind of every different element of the charity. So, whether it was asking people to give stock to our shops and um, become volunteers, take part in events. Um, yeah, like fund, just basically asking for donations. We were covering the whole spectrum and it was pretty much always on. Um, so we were very, um, yeah, there was a lot happening and it was very kind of fast paced before. Yeah. <laughs> it obviously changed a bit now. Um, and and so, um, so how are you handling the crisis right now? I think the main thing we've done is to really just kind of come back, everyone take a step back. Um, and really think about what's appropriate to be doing, what's relevant now for our audience, um, and kind of adapting products or campaigns and things that we had on our plate to make sure they actually fit, they're fit for purpose and they actually serve a need that's required right now. Um, and we have kind of um, done a bit of an organizational shift. So um, research is still at the heart of what we do, but we need to make sure that we're there for the people who need us right now. Um, and giving to support to people when they need it. Um, and often that's quite timely as things change. We've had to respond to the, kind of the news agenda and what the government's been saying. So we're having to be quite um, fleet of foot at the moment. So so um, um, I, I know on the, the panel that you, we, we were on, you were saying that you now do a call every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, to talk us through that. Yeah, um, so that was actually something that was initiated very early on, um, back when we were still in the office and we kind of saw this as something was brewing and we needed to be make sure we were kind of um, on the front, front foot of it as much as we could be. Um, so it was basically a, it's led by the comms team. So um, there's someone in that group from social media, um, comms, PR, um, digital, web. It's kind of a whole broad spectrum of people. Um, channel owners essentially so it's um it's somewhere where we can all discuss kind of big changes or updates and making sure that everyone in that group is on the same page of what we're saying and um, because the last thing you want to happen is us go out saying something on social media and the pr team is saying something else so it was just a way to make sure that we we're all aligned 
um, and to make sure that all kind of sign off processes were happening in one place um, with yeah the right people in the room. Because I, I think I mean I've I've seen the the um, um, the, the backlash starting to today. Mm. I saw a, a um, an article come out from Australia about the fact that it started with a, this is you know the template that people have been sending out saying I hope you're you know um, hope everything is okay. Um, and yeah. um, the funniest one I had was from American Express saying that they were they were there for me. I thought they were writing to me saying I didn't have to pay my bill this week or. <laughs> Um, yeah. or, or forever um but no that they're, they're there for me so they're there for me when i have to pay my bill you know but i mean it, it's you know um but i mean i think that's really good in terms of you know it, it is fast it, it it's amazing i mean i was writing stuff three weeks ago yeah. and, and 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 it's changed the whole thing is changing yeah. and, and it's changing by the day yeah and that's why it was so important to us to make sure that any comms and any um, updates we were sending out was the most up-to-date information because we're so aware of anything we tell people who are living with heart and circulatory disease, whether it's about COVID-19 or anything, that you know people take that seriously from us because we're a kind of leader in that field and people turn to us for advice and support at any moment. So we needed to make sure that we were confident giving people the right information when they needed it. Yes, and um, I mean, is do you have any other advice to, to people about about the, the situation right now? Um, I think I mean at the BHF we've we've always had a very kind of lot like stringent sign off process and a lot of our activity. Um, luckily, social media with us sits outside of that a little bit, but I think I would advise most people just to try and be flexible, adapt to the times and. If you do have a long sign-off process with brand and you know lots of people involved, just try and find ways to make that quicker. Because at the end of the day, the quicker you can get something signed off, the quicker it's out there, and the quicker your brand is responding to the the need. Um, so yeah, I think trying to yeah streamline any processes where possible is always the best way, um, even if it kind of goes up beyond or outside of what you normally do. Yeah. And and what are you finding in terms of content topics right now? I mean, how are you how are you picking those? And and are you going? You, you know, are you doing one and then you throw it away, or what? what what's happening? So we're we're trying to keep our content as varied as possible, um, and it's kind of down two streams, I guess. So the first is um, kind of replicating all the the government advice um, in turn in line with um, people living with heart and circulatory disease. So any updates on um, social distancing, whether you should be shielding or, um, yeah, kind of all that kind of stuff. So we've got a bank of content that we're churning out very regularly. Um, and also things around like keep it like wellbeing and, and fitness. We've got lots of at-home fitness ideas and products that people can use. Um, and just mental health as well. So we have kind of the pre-existing content that we would already um, kind of have, just keep pushing that out. Um, but we're also now, because we've kind of come out of the reactive phase of it, so to speak, we're moving more into proactive content um, management. We're trying to find more uplifting and positive stories of people who are doing, you know, amazing things, either for the BHF or just in general. Um, so we're working really closely with our um, kind of the area managers and the fundraising managers who are kind of on the ground speaking and seeing to lots of people who are doing lots of amazing things. Because um, we think that's really important. We don't want to just flood our channels now with just coronavirus content because although it's what people want to see, it's not everything. Um, so yeah, trying to keep it mixed really and give people some uplifting light relief where we can. And have you dropped everything that you, you had either planned or you were doing before COVID-19? Um, we've had to, we've had to drop some things, so things that were or campaigns related to our events or retail, um, purely because of cancellations or the shops being closed now. But um, we have managed to kind of adapt some products, and it's I think it's more about just being flexible and you're looking at what the offerings we have and trying to make them now fit to this new world. Mm. Um, there's no kind of there's no way in which you could kind of just take your existing products or existing plans to just carry on even if you tweak them a little bit you have to kind of really think what's 
going to be what's the purpose of it and what are people going to get out of um, these offerings so yeah it's all about being flexible i think yeah and 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 are you finding that um um you're you're well you said earlier on that you're mixing things up in terms of so there is COVID 19 advice yeah. but uh, um and i think it's important that we repeat that because it's very obvious that some people just don't seem to hear it yeah. um but I, I also think that that we are as as british people we always look for a funny side yes um and um and i also think that we are many of us are also trying to you know I look, you know there was a big shock i remember you know um for about for a couple of weeks we were like you know oh my god what's happening what we're going to do i remember that board meeting and we just kind of sat there and went what we're we gonna oh my god what we're we gonna do but i think now people are starting to see that they're looking forward even yeah. if we know that we're, we don't know how long we're going to be in lockdown uh, we kind of know there's certain things like um, a fun run. We're not going to have a fun run this year, are we? So w we can forget it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, so what are you doing in terms of that that marketing mix? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, we have to remember that there will be an endpoint, even if that kind of new world is different to what we're used to. Um, and I think it's important for brands to try and maintain their presence and you know be front of mind for that for the audience in which you know, you primarily serve. Um, so we're obviously, it's been hard for us because we didn't we didn't want to go out with specific fundraising messaging around this time. But as a charity, we still need to generate income because if we don't, there will be a point where it's, you know, it's really difficult to kind of continue as normal. Um, so I think that's why we've tried to kind of really um, balance our asks and our information. So with that kind of shift away from research at the moment um, our kind of new proposition is more patient first and giving people the support when they need it with our helpline and our we launched a new um coronavirus like online hub with, which basically collates all the information and advice that we've been giving out over the past few weeks and um, so yeah really bringing that to the forefront but then thinking a bit longer term and how we can potentially start to weave in more fundraising messaging and um, and trying to activate and motivate people to still think of us as their their charity of choice and um, a charity that they want to support off the back of this. Once so, through. so you you've taken a you you've shifted in your tone of voice from one of help, and now you're starting to tip your toe in the water around um, trying to get the fundraising going again. Yeah, definitely. And I think tone of voice is actually quite an interesting point. Anyway, um, so probably about a few weeks into the crisis um our brand team created a new tone of voice for the whole organization um well not a new not a new document completely but just advice on how to um perhaps adapt what you would have said previously in in light of the new circumstances which was really helpful i think for most um people because there are a lot of teams at the bhf and not all of them have you know direct access like we have to comms messaging all the time and um, yet people are still sending out emails still you know kind of powering on with their kind of day-to-day -day activity and um, but obviously we, we would never want to send an email that would be deemed insensitive or um not aligned with what we're kind of saying at the rest of the charity so um that's important as well to like to make sure your tone of voice reflects the times but also still reflects your brand and don't deviate too much from what you normally would be. And and so um, and I think you know that the tone of voice being one of being empathy. Mm. Um, but I, I, but I, I I agree with you that things are shifting, which is um, it is we all know that we switch on the TV at night and there will have been five six hundred deaths in 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 the UK. Yeah. Um, and they're all people's brothers, sisters, aunts. Grand grannies, granddads, fathers, mothers, and it's and it's terrible. And I have two elderly parents um, who are kind of locked down, and I and I probably will will um, never see. Well, I might never see them again. Oh. But the thing is, life goes on, doesn't it? And we've got to do our jobs, and, and part of that is getting that balance, isn't it, between being being empathetic, but also realizing that there is a job to be done, and 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 because if we don't do it, the company yeah. goes bust. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's hard. And I think for us, 
the, the kind of space that we're in as a healthcare charity, we've always had that level of, you know, people have always been coming to us um, around bereavements or um, anxiety and concern if they've just been diagnosed. So it's all, we've always had that element of being empathetic and trying to give people the best advice and support where we can. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's difficult because now it's a whole new kind of yeah. separate thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite hard. And as a social media team as well, we're pretty much on the front line. So we're seeing people's immediate reactions and responses and um, opinions. So it's beneficial in the way that we, we get the sentiment of our um, supporters very quickly and we're able to feed that back up um, to hire teams. If they're kind of in the process of implementing a new idea, we could be the ones saying like, this isn't gonna land very well because, you know, this is the examples of quest comments and um, complaints or queries that people have had in the past. So, and, and and have you got the balance between serious and funny, or is it all serious, or or what what are you doing around that? It's I'd say we're pretty much sticking to serious when it comes to COVID nineteen comms. Um, pr primarily, because we're not a particular like, funny brand. Yeah ourselves so we do try and have fun on social when it's relevant and, and we try and jump on fun trends and we do kind of social-led activity but I think it's a very different question as if um, compared to if you were like naturally funny brands so take like business smoothies for example like it would be very strange if they suddenly stopped using that tone of voice I'm sure they kind of adapt and flex where they need to but we haven't started kind of changing it too much to be honest so you've keep it. You're, it's it's important for you to keep it contextual and and yeah. Um, I mean, there's some there's some common themes, I guess, that you've got that you're you're sticking to anyway. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, um, what about um, so you've been talking about staying at home um, and um, using um, uh, making sure that the information is accurate. Um, I mean, there's so much. I mean, the, there's so much fake news around. Yeah. Um, that um, I mean, I, I just go. I just assume everything's fake and work back from there. Um, but um, I mean, it's got it's you know, there seems to be a tsunami of fake news. Mm. Um, but so I mean, it's about. I mean, I guess people, you're a destination in terms of people turning to you to try and get the right information, and you've got to yeah. kind of keep keep working with that. Yeah, definitely. And I think it probably goes in our favour that we are quite a relatively like, trusted brand and people have um often like a long like loyalty to us and with us so um yeah i think it's quite easy for us to kind of as long as we're confident in the information that we're giving um i think it's we're quite happy that people are coming to us and continuing to ask us questions um, and that's why actually we've, we've made a point now of every time we update any information on the website or on any kind of articles that we kind of add a date updated to the title so people know that we're keeping it fresh and it's it's actually the most up-to-date content that is reading it and this and are there any particular um tactics you've, you've used around acquisition retention and conversion brand awareness is, is there anything that you could share with people about that it to be honest it's kind of we haven't really got to that phase yet in terms of okay. trying to acquire new um supporters or follow it or kind of participants in any activity. The only thing we've done is um, just shift our one of our products, which um, is called My Marathon, um, and it's an annual product that normally runs every May. Mm -hmm. um, and the premise of it is to run the, like, the distance of a marathon across a month in oh. however, however long it takes you to do it. Um, obviously, that's become, a, we've had to tweak it slightly in alignment with like the government guidelines and making sure that we're only saying, you know, go out for your one time, your one exercise a day. Um, but that's actually had quite good pickup. So I think we're at, we've had a few thousand people who have registered to do it, which we weren't really sure that people were even going to be interested at all um, this year. So I think it's all about um, looking at the products you have, adapting them, and seeing if there's anything in your existing kind of suite of offerings that you can potentially use as an acquisition tool or um, give people like almost an exchange that they might be actually able to use or find helpful in these times. Um, I wouldn't personally think it's necessarily right to just kind of go out with a whole new product 
that's not sensitive to what's happening right now. So it just seems a bit, um, yeah, not the right thing to do. But we've we've tried to make subtle changes and we're trying to kind of just show that we're there to support people. And that's kind of our main, um, like, proactive message at the moment. Right. And, and as you say, within the framework of what the, the, the UK government is saying, yeah. um, and um, certainly where I live in West London, um, I, I would say that there was there were more people exercising than than um and i can imagine that would be a something that you know a, something that people can aim for yeah certainly and i think we also have to remember that a, a vast proportion of our supporters are people who are living with conditions who might actually be homebound and can't mm. really go outside because they're vulnerable or um, susceptible so it's I know that our innovation team are, are trying to think of ways in which we can activate them and ideas for like at home. Um, but again, it, it's very tricky when you're kind of, you are limited to just, you know, yeah. your space and what kind of fundraising um, that kind of lends itself to as well. So it's, it's quite tricky. But again, I think we're still in a kind of TBC phase. I think the next steps will be once it's a bit more kind of settled again, um, there'll be more ideas I think will come out. Yeah, and, and there's a question that I always get asked to ask, which is, what tools do you use? In terms of just what applications are you using, and um, you know, do you use social media listening? Um, to yeah. You? So we we've been using um, Sprout Social. Okay. Um, and we've used them for years and years, but um, essentially, it's for community management primarily, and um, some social listening. Um, and also publishing our content, so it's been it's, it's useful for us because we're we're so we're a team of seven in the social team, um, and we've got a, a few people who's primarily their main job is to basically respond to all the stuff that comes in, um, flag any issues, and um, track trend, trending topics or areas that people are talking about us. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's been very helpful in the last few weeks, definitely, because it's just meant that we can kind of keep track and tag um, COVID-19 related questions and um, comments very easily. Um, and it's also actually really useful to help to kind of pull reports and give a bit of insight to senior senior teams as well, who might not necessarily know what's being said on the front line, like we can see. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that does really help us that together quite quickly and I, and I think I mean the thing about social is it's instantaneous isn't it it's it's in real yeah. time um yeah. you put something out and um and and you know the sentiment will soon be picked up yeah definitely you can't hide from it either there's no point no hiding what people are saying because you're they're just going to keep saying it and it's their opinion um yes it's those opinions that we want to either um either not change but like make sure we're saying the right things so that they're happy with what we're offering them yeah and I, and I think that's one of the things that brands still ha are grappling with with the, the fact that um everything out on on social is is totally transparent yeah um and um and you can't run and you can't hide yeah yeah um any other tools you're using or apps or um we think what else is useful we use meltwater um right to system us just for a bit um for more extensive listening around um some topics um and that's actually been used we feed into like some other some other teams like insights and digital marketing as well just to kind of give them a bit of an oversight of what we're seeing um but yeah i think into yeah those are the main ones that we use kind of day to day um but we're always on the lookout for anything that can kind of help i'm sure i'm sure um, yeah and build our suite of platforms and I, I guess you're not really doing anything around discounts or, or anything like that it's not you're not in that no it, and price isn't really i mean you know people want to know about whether you're cutting price or you're putting price up but it's not that's not really what you're about is it no definitely not right now i think as i said earlier that our, our real main focus at the moment is just giving support to people in a timely fashion and making it easy for them to access all of our, so it, whether it's kind of accessing the helpline and speaking to a cardiac nurse or um, getting any information they need from our hub, that's the main thing right now. And I think it, no one knows what the kind of landscape is gonna be like for charities on the whole 
um, even in a few months' time. So I think it's we just have to kind of be reactive now. And I'm sure I know a lot of teams at the VHF are thinking further ahead. Um, but especially for social, we're just kind of trying to be in the moment and be there for people. Um, yeah, and just give them that reassurance and support that we're there. Then they can turn to us for any questions and then we'll be able to help them. Thank you, Emily. That's been really, um, really insightful, um, especially, you know, getting a, an inside view from a, um, a non-for-profit. I mean, you know, it's difficult times for everybody. Yeah. Um, and um, I think sometimes non-for-profits are, are passed over um, and um, it's been really useful. Thank you. Remind everybody where, where, where the people can get hold of you. Yeah, so I'm um, on LinkedIn. So just search for my name on there and you'll find me. And your, you spell your name? Yeah, <laughs> it's T-O-R-N-Q-V-I-S-T. Great. Talk Vist. Talk Vist. Exactly. <laughs> Emily, it's been great talking to you. Thank you very much. And, um, and I'll hopefully see you online soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.